If you've been shooting for a while, you would know that shooting with a bright light or sun behind the subject would cause extremely dark shadows that need to be fixed. But how do you fix images like this in post? One app that is both easy to use and relatively inexpensive is Luminar Neo, which costs $79 for a perpetual license and $50 for a one-year subscription. It has a wide array of tools for fixing the problem. So let's run through its five best. At number five is Global Adjustment Tools. For Luminar Neo, that would include its shadow slider and curves adjustment. These tools are likely what beginners will turn to first. Looking at the shadow slider, you can see that for this particular image, it works great. Its shadow adjustments exhibits good dynamic range, which sufficiently brightens the foreground while correctly leaving the sky untouched. Moving on to the curves tool, as you can see, it can also do the job, although it is a lot more complicated than the shadows tool. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of global adjustment tools? In terms of advantages, being global adjustments, they're much simpler to use and just work. In terms of disadvantages, I would say the main problem is artifacts and the lack of targeting. For example, in terms of artifacts, you can see how the excessive use of the shadow adjustment produces uneven brightening where the edges of the subject are distinctly darker than elsewhere. In terms of lack of targeting, you can see how the adjustment incorrectly includes the sky in the adjustment, which is not necessarily what we want for this image. With regards to the curves tool, in terms of image quality, you can see its improper use produces reduced contrast and unsightly color shifts, which degrade image quality. So if global tools are not working for you, it's best to try the next tools on our list, which allow for targeting your adjustments via masking. The fourth best tool is the gradient tool. Luminar Neo includes two types of gradient tools, the linear gradient and a radial gradient, which both work well. To demonstrate, let's attempt to brighten the underexposed building. To start off, it's important to note that the develop panel is currently shown as develop raw. Unfortunately, this panel does not provide access to any of the masking tools, including the gradient tool. Why that is so, your guess is good as mine. I'll start off by enhancing the sky. I'll click enhance, sky enhance. As you can see, performing that step replaces the develop raw panel with the standard develop panel, which does have access to the masking tools. I'll click on masking. I'll click on linear gradient. I'll drag in the linear gradient. As you can see, the gradient tools mask is characterized by a gradual transition between masked and unmasked areas. Next, let's brighten the car. For this, I'll use a radial gradient. I'll make sure to use a large radial gradient with a long transition for a more natural looking result. The last thing you want is the mask to be obvious. I'll increase the exposure. And there you go. Here is the before and the after. So that's how you use the gradient tools. What are its advantages and disadvantages? Well, in terms of advantages, compared to global adjustment tools, gradient tools allow for targeting of adjustments on specific areas. It is also easier to use than other masking tools while allowing for more natural looking adjustments. For example, it won't produce halos in the way that alternative tools might. In terms of disadvantages, the gradient tools don't allow for a well-fitting mask, which you might need for a better edit. The third best tool is the luminosity mask. The luminosity mask creates a mask based on the unique brightness or darkness present in an image. To demonstrate, let's brighten the foreground in this image. As you can see, this type of image will pose a problem for a gradient tool since the trees are protruding the horizon and will not be included in the mask. As such, let's use a more precise tool, the luminosity mask. I'll once again start off by enhancing the sky. I'll switch to the luminosity tool. 
I'll move the handles of the luminance widget to precisely mask the shadow areas. There, that's a good looking mask. Unfortunately, there are some errors. I'll use a brush to erase the unwanted areas. I'll increase the exposure. And there you go, a precise adjustment. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the luminosity mask? In terms of advantages, compared to the gradient tools, as you have seen, it is much more precise and was able to create a well-fitting mask for the trees and hair, which a gradient mask simply cannot do. In terms of disadvantages, it is not a great option when the brightness of the area is not distinct, producing highly erratic results as in this example. The second best tool is the Object Select tool. While Luminar Neo has two types of AI selection tools, Mask AI and Object Select, I actually prefer Object Select because being the newer tool, it is more accurate and the more flexible of the two. To demonstrate, let's work to brighten the subject and the rock formation, which I've shown the Luminosity tool struggling to mask precisely. I'll switch to the Object Select tool. I'll tap to select. And just like that, the person is precisely selected. I'll fix any remaining gaps with a brush. I'll increase the exposure. Next, I'll perform the same adjustment on the rock formation. And there you go, the final edit. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the Object Select tool? In terms of advantages, compared to the Luminosity Mask, as you have seen, it can be a lot faster and more accurate, particularly when the brightness of the object is not unique. In terms of disadvantages, Luminar Neo will at times not be able to recognize an object or handle complicated edges, such as in this example. And that brings us to the number one tool, the HDR Merge tool. While the HDR Merge tool might seem like an unconventional choice, it is a great option for beginners for its super simple operation, which give generally pleasing results. To demonstrate, let's balance the tones in this image. I'll navigate to Catalog View. I'll drag the raw file into the HDR Merge panel. And just like that, an output image is saved into the HDR Merge folder. As you can see, the result doesn't look bad at all. So how is this working? Well, typically an HDR Merge requires three exposures, underexposed, overexposed, and normally exposed. Luminar Neo can actually work with one exposure, wherein HDR Merge will create the three exposures out of the single raw file, which it will then fuse together via its processing smarts. No human intervention required. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of this option? Well, in terms of advantages, it is the simplest of them all. There's no need to even go to edit mode and can be used by anyone, even those with zero knowledge of Luminar Neo. How about disadvantages? Well, since the outputted file is a JPEG rather than a DNG, you can't further process the final image as a raw file. Also, if you don't like the final look, there is no way to control how the image is processed. So it's really take it or leave it. So there you have it, the five best tools of Luminar Neo to correct backlit images. I hope you found this video helpful. As you can see, Luminar Neo has a ton of powerful tools to help you get the job done. So let me know what are your favorite ways of correcting backlit images with Luminar Neo. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.